The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. So we are still discussing the heart of man. This teaching is supposed to make us good disciples of Christ. So last time, the last time we met, we were talking about the fact that um, the best way to deal with bitterness is to confess it. Now we define confession in the context of this teaching as this. Now to acknowledge or to admit by way of revelation the true states of one's hearts. It is a pouring out of facts either to suppress to God or to someone. Now with the intention of making peace, receiving forgiveness or favor from God or from man. So we said this kind of confession is with a certain kind of intention. Making peace. Receiving forgiveness. Or favor. Then we said that there are two kinds of confession. Confession number one. We dealt with that two weeks back. We said that in confession number one. You confess. Or admit before God. The true states of your heart. With the intention of making peace or receiving forgiveness and favor from the Almighty God. Now, but I tell you, I say, only you obey to me. Any assumption, no fear. When you born, you free. Free, you are coupon. So, confession one is admitting before God Himself. And the other one, we can only do kind of say, "Nipa no, only me, ni mono, oji atum." So we dealt with that. We can't want them. Now today we will start dealing with confession two. Now and ne ya beshe pe mukano ni atosumi yenu. Now confession two is much more difficult than confession one. Now ni atosumi yenu yenu e more dinka kracha ni didi kano. Because human beings differ. Sanse nipa uguahudu be bring. And some are very difficult dealing with. Now ebi huwa umiti ye. And so this one will be multifaceted. But confession too is this. You confess to someone. Or the perceived offender. What the state of your heart is. Or how you feel about an offense. With the intention of making peace and reconciliation. So the first one is dealing with God. The second is confessing to someone or the perceived Offender. The true state of your heart. The intention of making peace and reconciliation. But I want to say, brothers, that this kind of confession must be true and sincere. Now it must be true and sincere. I would like us to begin from the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 5 particularly. Now, this will help us lay a foundation to make it easy 
to confront an offender without malice. To confront an offender. Now without malice. Or to confront our own faults, mistakes and failures. And make amends with the offender or the offended with the kind of boldness that we need. And you see, you also need boldness to face your mistakes. You need boldness to say, I'm sorry. But we need to start from the sermon on the mount. So you make it easy for us to confront the offender. Or confront our failures. So tonight I will draw our minds to the fact that Jesus demands of the new creation a new form of righteousness. Righteousness that is superior to the righteousness of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, I also bring to fore the fact that the condition of our hearts it's important than our offering we give. See, the condition of our heart is very, very important than the offering we have in our hands. And that we cannot be right with God. Until we are right with one another. And that obedience is better than sacrifice. Let me take the four again. Tonight, I will begin by saying that. Jesus demands of the new creation. A new form of righteousness superior to the righteousness of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That the condition of our heart is of great importance to God than the sacrifices we give. Brothers, that we cannot be right with God. Until we are right with one another. And that's why obedience is better than sacrifice. Then we will look at the practical approach to confessing to the perceived offender. And we will look at the practical approach to as prescribed in scripture. And I want to say again that this venture is not easy at all. Human beings differ. So it is going to be very interesting. <laughs> but later on, I'll give you an example of a man who dealt with perceived and dangerous people. To tell all of us that we can manage people. Then, maybe I'll close this teaching with some four. Maybe. So let me begin today's with the fact that God demands of us 
a new kind of righteousness. We talk about principles and values of the kingdom of God. There is a new kind of kingdom righteousness. So we read from Matthew chapter 5. Matthew Verse 20. From verse 20 to 26. But I'll take the 20, deal with it, and then take the 21 to 26. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, me say, me say, say, me train me. I'm more sure for any Pharisee for the no soa. More inya osuro ahini no. Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Say, me train me. I'm more sure for any Pharisee for the no soa. More inya osuro ahini no. Now, so Jesus calls his disciples to a different kind. And quality of righteousness. Than that which has been exhibited by the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees. For them, they took pride in conformity to many extra biblical regulations. But their hearts were not pure before God. But this new form of righteousness that the new creation should walk in works from inside out. It first produces changed hearts the new motivations I'm saying that this new form of righteousness now expected of the new creation works from inside out it, it first produces a changed heart. Then it comes with new motivation. Now Matthew chapter 5. Verse 21. So from verse 21. I want to take time to read from verse 21 to 26. Now let's pay attention to Jesus. Let's listen to what he will say. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago. You shall not murder and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. Now this one, his teachings was not against the Old Testament, but to just clear the misunderstandings that people have concerning the OT. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Na midi ya mesimu se, ubiara ni bufu ninu ya no, bedi atimu umu fo, na ubiara obesi ninu ya se, Raka, no, obedi fo, empeni fo, eti tire no asinye, na ubiara obeka se, okwasia, so let's take this big one. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and then remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled with them. Then come and offer 
your gift. Ja waya ye de no afori muti ano enim ho na ko na woni wonu ano enko bom kane and sana waba abe bo afodie ana waba be ma waya ye de no. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way or your adversary may hand you over to the judge and the judge may hand you over to the officer and you may be thrown into prison na woni won krobo fo wo kwan so no woni no emmom entem na dabi won krobo ni no anyiwo anhye atemufo ensa na temufo no anyiwo anhye osomfo ensa na wanfawo ankoto afiase na try not to be in prison afi hwe yi na wanfawo anto afiase he is saying that do everything possible to avoid Prison. You could be spiritually in prison. The last verse 26 says that truly I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last pain. So don't think that I'm doing it to him. I don't care. He says, says you will pay. So let's pay attention to the sermon on the mount. Now normally when you read the sermon on the mount, you see that this is staff. Understand us so high. But the sermon on the mount is not something unattainable. So it is a statement of what will happen to you when Jesus has changed you. And put his own nature in you. That nature can fulfill the sermon on the mount. No matter how difficult it seems to the natural man. Like when somebody slaps you on the left cheek turn to the other and let the person slap this one the human nature cannot take that and the scripture says but when you get born again the new nature that comes into your spirit is able to obey the sermon on the mount so first john chapter 3 verse 9 first john chapter 3 verse 9 no one who is born of god will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. Now let's take this scripture again. The very, very first day I chance on this scripture. I read it about three times. My heart and my head were fighting. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. Because we have been taught that to err is human, as for sin, and and this scripture is scripture. Then he said, Because. See, John gives the reason why the born again Christian will not continue to sin. Because God's seed remains in them. 
We all say that we are children of God. And John says that yes, we are. Why? Because his seed remains in us. And he said they cannot go on sinning. Because they have been born of God. Now listen to this. According to this scripture, sin to the Christian is a mistake. Okay. So it's not because the Christian is weak. That is not how you should behave. Sin is wrong. So you need to correct it and do the right thing. One plus one is supposed to be two. Once you say three, then you have missed the mark. So transgression is missing the mark. When you miss the mark, correct it. Don't keep missing the mark. Because God's seed draws in you. Romans 5, verse 5. Romans 5, verse 5. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now, in the if you say one among what they am my yen so as she on Yankupon do a guinea come God's love has been poured into our hearts. It isn't going to be poured, but it has been poured into the heart of the new creation. Then the verse 6, 7, and 8 explain how the love looks like. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. When we were not lovable, Christ died for us. Very, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. Then look at verse 8. Let's read together. Ready go. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And what can I say? Now, when you come on, you need to or do you know a tree? If we say, that's why you need to be born for Christ to a woman. So that love of God that is poured in our heart, God has demonstrated it as to how it operates. It is while a person is still a sinner, while the person is still an enemy, while someone is still insulting you, that love can still love that individual. It's how don't know when you're na mungu kungu swa shia bu ya kume muno o chile mu se ni yake nka yano enti ya dasu yendi bo ye fo mpo o nyame doye. So your human nature may not be able to love that kind of people. And the ebi ana uye nipei unti mi no sa nipano diye. But the love of God that is poured in your heart can love the enemy. And do good to those who despise. And so, when you come to our church, we are going to come and mono. A bit to me, I'm buying my yard, doing a time for anyone who buy an empty ampo. Are we together? Me did say it. Are we together? Me did say Moody H. So, any time that you are reading the Bible, the previous man who can can't trust him. Know that you are feeding your spirit man the seed that is in you. Who is that? Anytime that you are reading the Bible, know that the Bible is for the new creation. And so let the new creation in you feed on the way, then grow thereby, and then the new creation will be able to attain God's standards. Hmm. We together. I I'm tempted to put a comma here. Uh, uh, me, 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 yeah, 
And let us all begin to think about what have you said. You are a different person. You are born again. That's who you are. And um, you are born again. You are a conqueror. That's who you are. You are a conqueror. You can love. This woman tells me that, see, Osofo, I cannot love this man. See, the love that I have for this man is finished. Where is the source of that love? If it is this love of God, it doesn't get finished. It can love the unlovable. Even when people don't want you to love them. That love will not hate that people. I want to challenge you. That the seed of God is in you. And you are born again. Allow that nature to override your human nature. And people will come close to you. Like Nicodemus went to Jesus. I know that you come from above. Because those of us who live on this planet, we don't behave the way you do. Sometimes when you're operating by the power of the Spirit and exhibiting the love of God, let allowing the seed of Christ to work out something in you. People look at you, say, "This guy should be a fool." I told you, be our boy, bro. Send your Christ to abide two minutes here. Hey, you need so edi edi achira. A bit of mushawa. We can say down for you. Ah, that my only minyansa. You are not a fool. Unye kwasiya. You are born again. Wawo fufro. When we have many of us on this planet Earth. Nations will change. Nations will change. So I want us to be upstanding. There will be still time for me to continue talking about the rest of them. But today I want you to know that Jesus demands of us a new kind of righteousness. He demands of you a new kind of righteousness. Why are you still fighting with your husband? The man may not be too good. But the love of Christ in you can manage that man can manage that man can manage that man